I think what we're seeing in music right now is what we saw with like the blog boom Mm -hmm. where everyone had a blog and everyone was like randomly making money all of a sudden. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then like, well, that's not the case anymore. Like you have to specialize in something and you have to figure out what your audience is and really like cater everything around that. Hello and welcome to the Ear Fuel Podcast. My name is Joel Freemark, and as always, you can find me on Twitter at at Get Ear Fuel and at The Daily Guru. Podcast is available at soundcloud.com slash Get Ear Fuel and in the iTunes store under Ear Fuel. What you heard at the top was part of my conversation with Stephanie Kibbe from Some Kind of Awesome. You know her well, of course, and we will get to that interview in a moment. Before that, though, a very brief album review. So out of nowhere the other day, the Foo Fighters dropped a five-song EP, and while you can get physical copies if you want, they released it in digital formats absolutely free. Very, very cool of them, and uh, oh yeah, it's called the St. Cecilia EP, in case you're wondering. It's five songs that the band loosely intended to be a bit of a look back over their 20-year career, and yes, the Foo Fighters have been around for two decades. Uh, Let that one rattle around in your head for a bit. Anyway, they've just wrapped the tour from their most recent record. And with Dave Grohl, I mean, you never know if or when they're going to record again. He put them on hiatus for a little bit. So this, to me, was definitely seen as somewhat of a holdover gift for fans. The five tracks do indeed fit the bill of a retrospective, as there are tones that you can hear from all across the band's history. Let's let's start at the end with the final track on this EP. It's vintage Foo Fighters sound, that great rockin' sound that people really fell in love with. Conversely, though, the title track, which leads off this album, is perfect for those who prefer kind of more of the hook-laden, somewhat more restrained rock sounds that the Foos have done as of late. For me, the track Iron Rooster is about as gorgeous a song as they've ever written, and it's perfectly contrasted by the Motorhead-inspired Savior Breath. And for those of you who think that the Foo Fighters can't rock hard anymore, give this one a listen and enjoy being wrong. It's got great speed, it's got great attitude to it, and yeah, like I said, the whole time I was listening to it, Definitely feeling like it was a Motorhead style track. There's not a ton you can say here. I mean, it's five songs and it's only 18 minutes, but all the songs honestly are very enjoyable. And that is coming from someone who really hasn't liked the last few Foo Fighters records. But the band does manage to touch on every corner of their history and they do it in a really, really cool way. For an album that was, if the stories are to be believed, recorded spur of the moment, it definitely resulted in great tunes, and it's certainly worth a spin or two if you enjoy rock music, and if you're already a fan of the Foo Fighters, this is going to be a great addition to your collection. If you're one of those people, though, who hates on the Foo Fighters for whatever reason, check it out. This is a good rock and roll record, and if you don't like it, hey, you know what? It's 18 minutes of your life. It's the same length as Inagata DeVita, which, let's be honest, you've already probably listened to way too many times. Moving on, if you don't already know some kind of awesome, what's your problem? Really, what, what, what's your problem? It's one of the finest music sites out there, as they're constantly showcasing bands that are doing the musical journey right. Not huge bands that want to sell out and just make money. Bands that really, they're just bands you want to get behind. Regardless of what style of your music you're into, you need to know it. And Stephanie Kibbe, or as most of you know her, just Kibbe, sat down to talk to me about music, and then it sort of spiraled into a whole bunch more. So how many shows did you end up doing in CMJ? Um, Did you lose count? Wait, shows or performances? Perform- Let's go with performances. Um, at least thirty-three. Wow. Okay. And that doesn't count. Um, I'm I lost count during the NYC Tabor showcase. Yeah. I like sat through some of them because I was the dork sitting off to the side in cake shop editing photos <laughs> on my laptop, being like, I don't know who you are. I yeah, don't care whatever. right yeah, now. Yeah, you sound okay, but mm, not okay enough. Well, I mean, like, do I really? I would like. Close my laptop, shove everything in, yeah. get up, take like twenty photos, and sit back down. <laughs> like, yeah. And then the the Aussie barbecue on Saturday, like I just lost my mind because uh-huh. it was it, it was the last day, and all these like little Australian bands that I had been interviewing all week were like, "Come drink with us!" Oh my God, you have to see so and so, and like Slum Sociable, who I am just like obsessed with now. Like, we were drinking and stuff, and they would be like, "Oh shit, so and so is playing. Go downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go upstairs. Downstairs." Yeah, so I think it was thirty three. That's not bad. Is is CMJ your your big event every year that you look forward to? I guess so. It's really like, like it was funny that you were like, I don't know if there's anything really that I want to see, and it was like <laughs> I took such a pretentious way out of CMJ well, this year because I was just so damn busy with other things. Yeah, I mean, like it helped a little bit that 
I was in between freelance gigs mm -hmm. and had the time for it. Sure. So I was just like, sure, why not? And just really like threw into it. But, you know, all these little baby bands, because South by, it's just oh, it's, it's it's a, a fucking nightmare. It's a joke. And like, who wants to spend that much money to maybe travel like a half hour each way to get into the city? Right. To whatever. To stand in line. To stand in line forever. To, yeah. Because who wants to be that asshole and be like, well, if I'm not on the VIP list, then I don't want. And even then, the VIP lists are like. It's like 80 people long. Right. Yeah. yeah not even one. Um, so with, with CMJ, it's a lot more approachable. And. It's here. Right. <laughs> That's a really big, lazy thing. But yeah. next week I'm doing uh, Brooklyn Electronic Music Festival, sure. which isn't as big. Yet. I Give mean, it time. Give it time. It's already bad enough Give that it, it starts at 7. Yeah. And there's like nothing in the day whatsoever. Yeah. You're just like, okay, well, you're out till 4. Yeah. And I mean, then, I think I think uh, it, it I, it's going to blow up soon, I feel like. It's just going to be ridiculous. Well, I mean. Not that it's, you know, nothing now. Yeah. But. You know, I, I but think but I, I it would be interesting to see like how they try to scale it because like, well I mean like electronica and EDM and right. whatever like you could either completely you know blow it out of the water or try to keep it little and yeah kind of local. But depends I mean, how like, much money's involved. Yeah, I mean like last year who did I see last year? Galantis, and I mean that was kind of the highlight for me, but. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the fullest that I saw any room. I guess it was Galantis for like mm -hmm. they they filled out um, music hall. Okay, but yeah, I mean I can't even think of the guy's name. This is Galantis Grillix. No, <laughs> he's really cool. <laughs> oh no, it was somebody. Oh, Alessandro Cortini. Uh huh. Um, and that was at Output. Yes, Output. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't full, and there was like a girl sitting on the ground on her phone. <laughs> Most of the time, like, like, uh, it was bad. yeah. And then she probably told her friends the next day just how crazy it was. And mm. of course, I was at the show, mm. and it was wild. Yeah, like the energy is just different yeah. because, like, if you're not, especially like if you're covering it, if you're mm -hmm. not into taking drugs, sure, it's very hard to like really get into it and be like, okay, well, I'm taking pictures of a guy with a laptop Standing again in front of his laptop. Oh well, that one. Yep. Wiggle the knob. Let's get that one. Like at least with Galantis, it was interesting because they had like masks and things that sure. they handed out to the audience, sure. and they were like trying. But everything else, it was just like push Do another button. When when you're not covering a show, is it tough to go to a show and not cover it? Like you know, the the mentality for me at least, it's so hard to like switch over to like I'm just going to go to the show and I'm not going to notice all of the little things that happen. And <laughs> basically, ever since I uh, so I went to to Belmont University. Mm -hmm for uh, music business and pretty much since the first day of class like music has been ruined for me but sure. also in a good way because i'm always like last night i went to um rockwood stage two mm -hmm. to see claire nova mm -hmm. and like they're working her at the the place that i'm tending at right now sure and um you know everyone's like you know trying to figure out like what the vibe was and the the crowd and blah blah blah, blah and like because I have a hashtag tattoo and I love social media. I was looking at everyone's phones sure. to see how they were like interacting with stuff. Uh -huh. And like I could tell which song was probably going to be the next single just by like who was doing Snapchat videos over like sure. just taking pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting to like look at things like that, but I can't ever shut my brain off. Right. I'm always looking around just being like, what are you doing? You know, like. Right. What are, what are you tweeting? Are you tweeting that you're bored or are you tweeting that this is mm -hmm. the coolest thing? You've, which, which is funny seeing that, you know, when you came in, we were like, sound scan is still the exact same yeah. as it's ever been. And, and here we are, we're, we're, you know, that you can. And I, and I think that's totally a legit thing that you can gauge how good a performance is going on what style of social media. Are people texting their friend because yeah. they're bored or are they lighting up their Twitter account like, oh, my God, how are you not here? Yeah. I mean. I'm not terribly professional when it comes to being a <laughs> journalist. So um, I always take things from a, a fan perspective uh -huh. to begin with. Um, and part of me looking at phones is like, God damn it, you guys really like put it down for a second. Yes. Like, you know, that's a thing uh, you were asking if like I can ever shut my brain off. Like yeah. if I have my camera with me, I have there's a point where I go, I have 300 photos. There has to be at least 10 that are going to be good sure, enough. Sure. I need to stop. Yeah. Because, you know, like who was it? Weaves. Jasmine. The singer, like, she's my most favorite person to take pic pictures of because she's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, she rolls around on the ground in her beer and, like, like wagging her fingers and sure. stuff. But at one point I was like, I just really like weaves. Can I just, like, enjoy the show? And I had to, like, physically put mm -hmm. my camera, like, in the bag, zip it up, and was like, don't touch it. 
leave it. Yeah, you're not. It's it's. I, I say it all the time that when you're taking photos, you're working suddenly. Even if you're not a mm-hmm. professional, you're you're working. It's sort of like to date myself, um, <laughs> and and reveal something. I don't know if I should reveal here. A lot of people might hit the stop button. So when I used to follow fish, uh, back in the early '90s, I'm so fascinated by fish fans. I haven't seen them in nine years because uh, I grew up. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, um, but I, you know, I was never like, Hey bro, like I just dug it. I was like, wait a second. Mm-hmm. I can travel all summer, see a great band who can play and just like hang out with my friends. It was great to me, but I ta- I was a taper for a long time. And so like, I would have to get to the show like an hour early and set up my taping rig and make sure the levels were right. And when people started having fun and like throwing glow sticks and bouncing balls around and be like, shit, I hope they don't hit my mics and all this stuff. And after doing it for a couple of years, I was like, this is stupid. Like I'm not. I'm not enjoying the I'm working. Yeah. And and I think people forget that even if it's just one photo, which is going to be terrible because mm-hmm. your iPhone can't adjust to the lights and everybody's running around. So it's going to be blurry. And if you take a video, the audio is going to be all blown out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ian Mackay said it a long time ago. He said uh, I saw him playing in D.C. and he said, please put your phones away. You blue faced people. <laughs> even if you text someone right now, we're going to be off stage by the time they get here. Mm-hmm. I'm like, just. Show up and yeah. enjoy the show. I mean, I know a lot of it has to do with bragging rights now because, yep. like, everything is about what you've done and, like... How many likes did you get? Well, and and, and how much you can consume. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm hoping we get to talking about consumption soon. Oh, we will. So. We, you know, why don't we talk about consumption now? <laughs> I mean, because it's kind of like the 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 digital space in terms of covering things has changed because I oh, feel God. like even 10 years ago when blogs were, like, the thing... It was all about, oh, listen to what this person's talking about. It was more about curation Mm -hmm. and and people having knowledge. And now it's just, to me, and you you work more in this space than I do, who can vomit the most stuff? Oh, God, yes. Um, I don't want to name any names. So Some Kind of Awesome started in 2010. Okay. In January, it's going to be six years old, which is so crazy to think Mm -hmm. about. But, I mean, that was like the height of when people were finally starting to understand Twitter and stuff. So, like, we kind of, like, brought in this, like... At one point, we called it the Axis of Audio, and we threw a party at um, South By and, like, all of this other stuff. But it was um, Consequence of Sound, Mm 24-bit, Anti-Quiet, Rocket Out Blog before they got acquired by Consequence of Sound, and um, the Audio Perf. Uh And um, we just kind of, like, rolled together, and there's one of those that is doing a lot better than the others. Sure, yeah, yeah, Um, there is. It's because they stopped curating as much and everyone else who decided to curate has three jobs yes like me so but you can sleep at night i mean the, if you the, want the to. four hours that in, in i theory, get in but theory, yeah you can sleep. um you can morally sleep at yeah night. we did we tried for a while like we legit tried at, at one point there were four of us that were contributing to, to some kind of awesome and um we had goals. We were like, okay, everybody does five posts a day. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 sure. do. And we would like try to crank out as much stuff as we could. And that was when we were kind of making money and thinking that maybe we could do this for a living. Mm-hmm. And then all of us, because we all had day jobs, like got exhausted and just rage quit. It's tough to do both. Really hard. And we actually didn't have stuff on, on the site for six months. Mm-hmm. And it took a little while, but it kind of like brought itself back. And like even now it's not to a point where I want it to be but Mm -hmm. like because I haven't shut up on Twitter like on either of my handles Uh that people haven't completely given up on us but yeah it's very interesting to see like the guy like you know like the complexes and pigeons and planes and stuff like Mm -hmm. they didn't give up they kept cranking things they get all the premieres and they just yeah. All post the same shit. It's a clearinghouse. Yes. If you want 10 reviews <clears throat> of the new Adele record, you could go to Consequence of Sound, mm-hmm. where, let's be honest, when they started, that Adele record should not be there. Mm-mm. It shouldn't, but they, you know, and, and, and they're not the only ones. I mean, oh, you no, know, no. Every, most of the large publications, they do it. And, and it even happens in, in the YouTube space, where music critics who are all about certain styles of music now are doing song reviews of the new Adele. Oh, yeah. And and some of those people are my friends. And you know what? All the power to them because mm-hmm. they're making money hand over fist. And, you know, that's great. But it, it's it's interesting that it's almost like indie labels have almost started in the music critic community in that people are just like, I don't want to deal with the large clearinghouses. Mm-hmm. I'm specifically going to read 
this website because it's not a blog anymore. Mm-hmm. This website because because they curate. And is that you know you guys made that choice, and is that where you prefer to be? Yeah, I mean, I just from a, a personal standpoint, like I never really go for the big guys. There's like a handful of things that everybody loves, like the Foo Fighters or, I mean, I like to emphasize that I liked him when he was nobody and not dating she who I wish I could light on fire, but, you know, Calvin Harris, um, you know, things like that, like <laughs> where, oh God, if I could, I would light Taylor Swift on fire so hard. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, like so there... I won't, I won't tell you that I, I think 1989 is a fun record. You know what? Everybody thinks it, it's except a, it's for me. A, it's a fun And it's record. mostly because I just can't buy into her I, as a I, person. Oh, I get it. I get but, it. Yeah. But yeah, so like there's like the handful of like mainstream things, but like I, I grew up in, in Central Florida uh-huh. and um, there were bands like Copeland and Anne Berlin and... Uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones that like churned out all at the same time and like the Central Florida hardcore scene under oath and sure. stuff like that um, was all happening when I was like in high school yeah, and, and late middle school. And um, so I always had this like very independent, like scene focused mm-hmm. kind of like mentality. And um, those people don't have any, any fans or any money and like Drake and Adele and whoever the fuck has they have so much money. Yeah. So why would I waste time knowing that like no one's gonna come to some kind of awesome for Drake? Right. No one like everyone knows that I I, I don't care about your Adele phone or whatever. Like yeah. they're coming because, you know, like I dug through my emails and dealt with I think I have three thousand emails right now from uh CMJ forward that I'm like trying to comb through. But like Just you know everybody, hey, check out our new band. Yeah, hey, there's yeah. this new band. Here's an exclusive premiere. Yeah. But like like the TV girls and, and the slum sociables and the mm-hmm. the Mr. Hudson's and stuff of the world where they're like just hanging out in this like weird space where someone's willing to invest in them. But mm-hmm. like not the entire world knows about them yet. Sure. Yet. Yet. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. If I tweet long enough, maybe. <laughs> so so but social media over the last few years, especially Twitter, has it's it's become ridiculously mm-hmm. powerful. I mean, you know, you get one tweet that gets lit on fire. And you know you're you're up there in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. How do you see that impacting kind of how bands go about their lives? It's weird because like you can tell which bands. I mean, there are some bands that are just made for Twitter, and there's some that are just made for Snapchat, mm-hmm. and there's some you know, like Dylan Francis shines on Snapchat, but he's not very good on Twitter. Uh huh. But he's still got a billion followers, anyways, because he paints sure. with um stupid face uh diplo and um <laughs> now, do do they retain the same nicknames over time <laughs> like she who i want to set on fire <laughs> yeah I mean. oh she will always be the one that i want to set on fire until like the mask gets pulled off and everyone else sees her for what i see like uh-huh. i just the gut whatever um <laughs> but yeah i mean it's it's interesting because like everyone has a different approach to it you know like tv girl for example very baby band but has got, like, a decent amount of traction, but, like, they'll go off on these industry rants all the time. And, Uh like, I don't know if their followers care other than me. Sure. You know, but it's a they're just voicing their opinions and voicing their struggles. And it is interesting to see, like, drama unfold on Twitter. Like, Mm -hmm. Jack White and what's-his-face. You know, like, me, someone said something mean to me. Really? You're in a rock band. Go punch him or shut up. Like, Go cry into your millions. Right? But... Yeah, it, it's been interesting to watch it happen. Like, some people start off as like YouTube sensations, and then, and then they get a record deal, or yeah. you know, like the Carmens and stuff of the world. Twitter definitely helps, and if you have the right Twitter friends, it definitely helps. Like mm-hmm. Taylor Swift, as much as I hate her, like she'll be like, "Oh, I checked out this like sweet band," and right. da, 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 right. and then like, boom, that band is big. You know, that like, band has a following. Yeah, and then it sucks that they get that much power, but I mean, like even there, like. W- why am I around if Taylor Swift can find something and mm-hmm. tweet about it and get them all these glorious fans? Right. It, it, it It's frustrating as someone who, arrogantly me, <laughs> thinks that they know a thing or three about what good music sounds oh, yeah. like and that I go out and I say, hey, here's this really, really great band and, you know, seven people. And I love those seven people mm-hmm. get behind and they're like, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, a Taylor Swift or a – any one of dubious note comes along and says, I really like this band. And mm-hmm. listen, I'm like, wow, I've heard this band a million different times under different names. Yeah. And they're crap. And all of a sudden, you know, they're they're yeah. on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah. And 
Um, it's very frustrating. It's not fair. Because, I mean, I like to find the ones that are good and pure of heart. Mm-hmm. I go out of my way to make sure they're not all assholes yeah. that we support. But, yeah, you know, like, oh, Scumbag Steve has, like, a number one album because right. Tay-Tay liked it. Right. Great. Fantastic. Thanks. Right. You know, Appreciate or, you it. know, just people who have clearly shown that they have minimal to no talent or just complete mm. jackasses. And it's weird, too, because, like, sometimes it, even though they are good, like, mm-hmm. um, who is it? Rabel. Mm-hmm. I love Rabel, but like he's buddies with Kesha. Mm-hmm. Kesha tweets about him all all the time. Sure, doesn't stick at all. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't uh-huh. make any sense. I guess maybe because he doesn't have enough going on, but like it doesn't always work. But it is interesting to watch it happen. Well, and, and what do you think though about these about the bands that are like purposefully avoiding social media? You know, who won't have a Twitter, who don't do Bandcamp because. Uh, th- I wish people, because the expression you just gave me is what everyone says on that, where you just roll your eyes. Why? Just, I'm going to let you go with that. It's cute. Mm-hmm. I bet you also spent money on cassettes because you're being true to the art form, and sure. that's fine, but access is everything right now. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily have to, like, what does my best friend say? You don't necessarily have to, like, shove an antenna up your ass and call yourself a, a channel, but, like... Just be there. You don't have mm-hmm. to like go out of your way to have like a content strategy for it or whatever. But people like what they like. Yeah. And they, li- you know, like David Greenwald, he mm-hmm. is like king of Bandcamp. Sure. I love getting emails that's like, <laughs> David Greenwald's been buying music on Bandcamp. And I'm like, oh, sick. <laughs> like, because he always finds good stuff. But, you know, yeah. like, you have to have one of everything. You have to have one of everything. Just in case. Just in case. Just in Not case someone that- stumbles across that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and especially if you're going for, like, a younger audience at all, yeah. like, younger audiences love Instagram. They mm-hmm. love Snapchat. Maybe with, like, things like Snapchat, it might be hard because, like, you have to update it in yeah. order for it to work. But, yeah. like, you know, something as basic as just, like, your album cover or, like, the tour flyer sure. or something. Just to, like, Or, like, hey, here's the there. shitty bathroom we're in, yeah. in, you know, Bozeman, Montana. No offense to Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> Great part of the world. <laughs> great part of the world but yeah i mean like i don't i i would never advise because i also do consulting for Mm -hmm. social media um i would never advise to be like oh well you know what if you just want to have twitter that's fine yeah like facebook is essentially like everyone's website like i don't look for band websites anymore right no no no. right if your tour dates aren't on your band camp or your facebook what the hell's wrong with you you know yeah so so when you see these bands who refuse, they're just like, yeah, man, we're just we don't we don't need to do that. We're keeping it real. No, no social media. Do you just kind of shake their hands and say, e- enjoy living in your mom's basement. Um, normally, that's around the point where I just delete the email and go, uh-huh. well, that was nice. Like, it's, it's cute luck. that you're going to go advocate like that. But, good luck. you know, um, because, you know, you obviously, it. you know, the, the digital space has changed everything. Yeah. Bandcamp to me is the greatest thing to happen in music in so long. Yeah. I, I adore band camp and I'm not being paid by them mm-hmm. yet. Um, huh? Just because it's literally like I did this song. It's leaps and bounds better Here. than Reverb Nation by yes. far. Yes, absolutely. It's sophisticated and like just the way that you can customize things like absolutely. Mm-hmm. It And, and you know, being able to just hear all this music and uh, it's kind of made the teaser a little better because you can mm-hmm. be like, here, you can hear four of the 11 songs on the album. Mm-hmm. And if you like it, can we quit $2? Yeah. Can we, can we get $2 for this air? Not to mention the different like file formats, like, because mm-hmm. I'm a dork and I like having waves. No, you're, you're not a dork. You're somebody who likes music. <laughs> and you can hear the difference between oh, yeah. an uncompressed file and a compressed. I fucking nailed that. You're NPR wearing quiz. a Beck shirt. Yes. You understand what compression in music yes. is because if you listen to Beck on MP3, if you listen to Sea Change, if you listen to Midnight Vultures, and then you put on like a vinyl copy or an uncompressed wave, you're like, oh, there's a song here. Mm-hmm. No, no offense. I love having, you know, like oh, no, Sea Change, sure. having that on my iPod saves my life all the time. Oh, yeah. But to hear it. You said my two favorite Beck albums. Sea <laughs> Change is, is absolutely bar none my favorite. It, it is Midnight by a long Vultures shot. is mine just because it was like my gateway drug into There him, you go. But... Yeah, I think second for me is probably Mutations. Um, okay. Because it's just so wonderfully weird. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, with no slam on Morning Phase, when he said it's going to be a companion to Sea Change, I was like, it won't be. Mm-hmm. But you, you can't. And then I listened to him like, <laughs> it you makes win. Sense. You win. Yeah, Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Um, but he respects the artistry. 
you know, it, it, <laughs> where were we? But he's bad at social media, of all people. Yeah, terrible. He's awful. And like, I would love to just walk up to whoever is handling his stuff and be like, are you joking? You tweeted a half hour after his Beats interview that he was on. Yeah. Where were you? Did you care? Did you try? Did and, you really try? And they barely honest? even publicized, what was it, Dreams? Was that the loose track they released a few months ago? <laughs> yes. And it was just like, I, I literally stumbled across it. You know, I was like, why? Yeah, you have to be crazy like I am about you know, Beck to know that that's happening. Noted. Yeah. Um, the, 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 I'm, I'm we're the, all things back. No, um, no, seriously. I'm like the, the super fan, like uh -huh. Facebook group and stuff. Like, we're crazy. We're crazy. Uh, uh, I, it's okay to be crazy for he that sort of music. And we know. Well, I hope someone gets him a tissue. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, but that's also, it's an interesting thing, though, is that you don't have artists of that caliber bothering with Bandcamp and uh -huh. cutting, out, cutting out the middleman anymore. They're still dealing with record labels uh -huh. when they don't have to be and stuff like that. As, as a music professional, do you think that the large labels have long to live? As long as there are going to be bands that are like global, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, Sun Records. Sure. Like the reason why they went under is because Elvis just got too big too fast. Well, they sold his contract, yeah. Well, yeah, but still, like, scaling is very they, hard. They couldn't handle yeah. making a million copies. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, scaling is very hard unless right off the get go, like, you hire the best management and you get a really great accountant mm -hmm. and you like sign a really good distro deal and blah, blah, blah. Like you have to line all of these things up so that if you're going to be a career musician who's like completely independent forever, mm -hmm. that you never fuck anything up. Sure. Otherwise you have to have people who have been doing this for like decades go, okay, well we're anticipating that you're going to sell like this many units, blah, sure. blah, 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 blah. Like if you want to go from here to here, Right now, you don't have the the capital to like get you know like a, a radio plugger or something mm -hmm. like that. You don't have it. We'll invest in you. We'll mm -hmm. all like you know. I I think we should be structuring deals a little bit better. But you know like, I mean I, I think we've been saying that for yeah. eight thousand years. So then, but. do you see it as now bands will try and just cultivate the following on Bandcamp, on Twitter, and all that, and kind of where it used to be like, hey, here's our demo tape. It'll be like, here's our social media following. Here's all the people we bring to the table. And by the way, we can we can record a song. I think that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. um, like I've I've toyed with the idea of putting out records mm -hmm. for like some of the, the littler things that I like. Sure. And I know for a fact, like I would not I would never sign anything that where they didn't at least record an EP on their own. Sure. And show that they have initiative and are willing to like really invest in themselves before anything else. Yeah. If you can't be bothered to plug into your laptop and, and record a new kind of lazy yeah you can't just like roll up with a demo and hope for the best anymore mm -hmm. i mean you kind of can and there are always exceptions and stuff sure, but sure um you can't anymore <laughs> there's the the barrier to entry is like so low where everybody's a band yeah like i could go home tonight and put something together on my laptop and be like kb and the rockets here we go like <laughs> <laughs> sure you know like right. buy this song on Bandcamp. You know, bug the shit out of everybody right. on Twitter. Go stream it on Spotify and a then, thousand times. You know, like walk walk up to my friends that work at labels and go, "Hey, will you give my demo? We, we, we put on my record. You know, like we put we put this out. You gotta give it to so and so. Like uh -huh. once they hear it, I'm you know, like no. There's a band here in New York that I I saw at the the Taper Showcase. Mm -hmm. Um, really good, but they have no following whatsoever on social media. And they were like, I don't understand why we can't get so and so at X label sure. to listen to our demo or like pay attention to us. And I'm like, because you're nobody. Yeah, right. I have more followers than you. Right. And like, I'm just a person. <laughs> you know, like you're a band. You're a band that supposedly works hard and, mm -hmm. and you can't even get. It's not all about music. Yeah. And that's just the reality. Yeah. And even with that, you can fake the numbers if you need to. Like, you can, right, buy, you can followers. buy followers. Yeah. Or SoundCloud cloud plays or anything you right can buy anything yeah yeah I mean, if you can't even bother to throw ten dollars at what is that fiverr.com or whatever to buy I, yourself some stuff i don't know i don't ever use those i would never what I what's have, fiverr i have earned every single one of my right pathetic fan following <laughs> but but here's my thing on that and I, i've been saying this since day one i would rather have 10 followers who are really into what i'm doing oh yeah than a thousand followers and 10 of them are really into what i'm mm -hmm. doing 
Um, you know, because you look at a lot of things, whether it's, you know, YouTube subscribers, which is the most telling of all of them, Twitter followers. It's like I've, I've dealt with people who are like, yeah, I have 20,000 followers on Twitter. I'm like, you haven't gotten one favorite or we- retweet mm-hmm. in three weeks. Yeah. So either they're fake or they really don't care. Like you did one thing two like years for, ago yeah. and they just haven't unfollowed you yeah. yet. It yeah, bothers can, me more than um, it should. I promise this isn't name dropping, but um, I am. <laughs> no, I'm I'm relatively decent friends with Kenna. Okay. Um, and he is of that mentality where uh-huh. like he would rather, you know, there be a hundred people that are willing to just like support him however possible than like have a hundred thousand followers sure. and just, it's, it's, um, it's better that way. I want people to be yeah. into it. I and wanna... he, his, he, his thinking behind all of it is he's very smart. Mm-hmm. He's very smart. It's been fun to watch him cause he, he just launched, um, it's not officially a Kickstarter, but a crowdfunding uh-huh. campaign for his new album and like a music video and stuff like that. And just to watch like him sit in a live stream and be like, okay, guys, ready? Everybody hit share at the same time. And you like watch the numbers double. Yeah. And then he'll be like, okay, hi, new people, blah, 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 blah. And he'll like call out people because he like has learned some of his core fan base by name. There you go. And he'll be like, what up, Dana? Yeah. What up, Finn? Okay, right. guys, ready? Share. Like, and it's, it's the new age of fan interaction yeah. where it's like, you know, and I know how much you hate her. Taylor Swift does a great job at oh, it. Oh, no. Like, she's... like grabbing her fans at the Grammys and taking them backstage. Oh, yeah. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, Bad idea. very smart businesswoman. <laughs> very smart businesswoman. But with social media, though, do you f- ever have to approach social media differently because you're a woman? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I've i kind of given up – this is going to sound awful. I've kind of given up on people get, taking me seriously Okay. because I promise if I tweeted the same – like, if I were a man and I tweeted the exact same way about the bands that I like and uh-huh. that I care about, I would probably get a lot more – or be respected a lot more because I get very excited about things. Mm-hmm. I try to, to get people on board with it. But, you know – a cute little like I I might as well be a One Direction fan uh-huh. screaming and crying even though like I went to school to like study the business mm-hmm. I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about but she's probably a groupie like I have a friend who kept calling me a band-aid because Oof. I wanted to go to CMJ and like check on weaves because I know they had five shows mm-hmm. and I would walk up to Dana and be like do you guys need anything like are you good I know sure. you guys are in a completely different country right now you know like if you need anything yeah Here's my card, blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, uh-huh, okay. Like, a little off-putting, but uh-huh. you and, just get used to it after a while. And from the writing side of things, do you feel similarly as a journalist? Yeah. Well, I mean, for example, the the Jake Isaac interview, mm-hmm. I don't think he thought I was actually going to ask valid, serious like, questions, questions. Even though I started off, like, very excited. Mm-hmm. Like, all of a sudden, it like, he said something, and it triggered in my brain. And I just, like, snapped into pro mode for a minute. And... You know, like he, one of his friends before the interview was like, oh, you're the one he's supposed to interview with? Oh, Jake, blah, blah, You know, like I had on probably the same kind of like get up, but mm-hmm. like my makeup was a little bit better or something. In that sense, I don't know if I would have gotten the interview because they were like, ooh, a pretty girl. Sure. But a lot of times when you're just hiding behind Kibby mm-hmm. as a name, like people assume that I'm a guy. Uh-huh. Like no one realizes that the founder of Some Kind of Awesome was a woman. Uh-huh. I mean, like, I had a co-founder and sure, stuff. Sure, but, like, sure. when we did a CMJ showcase in 2011, I think it was, I will never forget. It was all, like, we listen for you, like, all these, like, dude bloggers mm-hmm. standing outside. Dude bloggers. And one of them thought I was, like, somebody's girlfriend. And I was just like, no, guys, I'm Kibby. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. So how do you deal with that? I've just made my own world. Mm-hmm. I don't play their games anymore. Like I have created my little space and just decided that they're going to have to figure it out. Mm-hmm. You just have to like roll it off and like try. I mean, like I've had to, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud. I've had to tell a band once because a label invited me out to uh-huh. hang out with them. Uh-huh. And afterwards I'm trying to talk to them about something. And the one guy gave me this weird look and finally had to go, listen, I don't want to suck your dick. I just want to make you famous. Is that okay? (laughs) Like, I had to say that. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, his whole demeanor changed, and I was like, I'm not interested in any of you. Right. At all. Right. Like, 
I've never, uh, I've never hooked up with anybody in a band like as much as I dream of it. Sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. like you have to. You're professional. Yeah, but girls are always going to be groupies. Girls mm-hmm. are always going to. Oh, she's a little too excited about that band. Maybe she shouldn't be invited out. Mm-hmm. Or like you just get over it. And and as much as we like to think that social media kind of in a way silences gender because you're just reading text. <laughs> It doesn't at all. Oh, no. I mean, like, I feel like if I had tweeted about, you know, like, where's your girl earlier, that, like, why are you being so sensitive? Not, that's fucked up. Yeah. I can't believe it's 2015 and there's still sexism in the music industry, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. blah. It would have been like, why are you being so sensitive? That's always the thing that I get back if I, like, am outraged about something Uh or I was targeted as a woman. Why are you being so sensitive? So does that ever... Uh, color what you report, so to speak, just because you don't mm. just don't want to deal with the bullshit. Not really. I mean, like we do a, a feature called Night Out where uh-huh. it's not a full scale review of the performance or whatever, but we just talk about like being out of the show, like the crowd was crazy, blah 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 blah. Um, and for Fiddler, it was like a <laughs> younger crowd. Yeah. Um, and I went with a friend of mine that I normally don't bring out to shows and stuff. But I had a plus one and didn't want to blow it. Didn't want to lose it, yeah. And you only, uh, you could only shoot for like three songs. And the second song, she was like, "Some guy just groped me. Like he shoved his hand up my skirt. Can we please go?" And I was like, "Okay, well, this next song is two minutes long, and then we're out. Like, because mm-hmm. that's fucked up." Yeah. Um, because she couldn't find the guy. He would just like in passing. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And I made sure to write about it. And I like even cited statistics. That's like it's really fucked up that women. Spend more money on music. Yeah. Period. But we still get treated like garbage. Like, we're not even equal on a fan level. And the difference is, you write that and it's taken its one way. Mm-hmm. I write that for where I oh, publi- yeah. get publicized. I do my stuff. That was a sentence. Um, <laughs> and it has a whole totally different context. Oh, Same. Yeah. We might have to do that. No, I remember when Lenny Kravitz put out uh, when Are You Gonna Go My Way was the single, again, mm-hmm. dating myself. And everybody made this huge to do because his drummer was a woman mm-hmm. with a big afro, and she was she, and is she remains she's a great drummer. Now, granted, it's just a temporary drummer because Lenny mm-hmm. plays all the instruments on his records. But you know, I remember it's just this huge thing like, oh, female drummer was like I, two two soapbox for literally one sentence. I'm looking forward to the day when we can stop calling them female musicians and just call them musicians because mm-hmm. it's the same fucking thing. It mm-hmm. it drives me absolutely nuts when people are like it's an all-female punk band i'm like so it's a punk band mm-hmm. yeah it just soapbox over with the fact that we have you know there's really no need for a label anymore you don't you just don't you don't mm-hmm. need it does indie still exist oh yeah i think it exists too much mm-hmm. unfortunately it's now to a point where okay so basically everybody's indie but now it's kind of like like restaurants, you either like go with the ones that try to source locally and like really try to feed into it, or the ones that are trying to scale so fast and like, like the Dos Toros of the world versus uh-huh. like, the hole in the wall Mexican place absolutely down the, down the street. Like, everyone can afford a publicist. Everything is getting like decentralized so much, which is kind of cool, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like everyone is expecting to scale so fast. Mm-hmm. If you're in a band. And you have 600 followers on Twitter and they all happen to be like people from your high school and like the central area, Mm -hmm. you know, like you're not going to be on the radio. You're not going to be touring. You're not going to be like going to Europe anytime soon. Yeah. It takes a while. Got to get in the van. Yeah. So indie exists, but it is not, it's not the same at all. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to think of like what kind of jargon we could start using Throw out there yeah you know. that's yeah I, d- I do think we're at a point where we need to start redefining a lot of things i was talking about it i think i did a video maybe about redefining these antiquated terms that mm-hmm. that just you know sound scan um you know and and practices that just don't mean anything anymore yeah with minimal offense to all of the terrestrial radio stations out there whatever they're spinning doesn't really matter anymore mm-hmm. you know what's getting two million views in an hour on youtube that's what's hot you know, and I know that you know Billboard has finally, over the last year, started to integrate uh, YouTube views into their metric. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I think things like that, and and a single, does a, a single's really 
don't exist anymore. I feel like they do. It's just it's a don't. song now. You know, it's like oh, they posted a new song. So with with all that, where do you see music going in the next few years? What is the future <laughs> of music? Um, Tell me the future. I would love everyone to be realistic about their ambitions. Uh -huh. I think what we're seeing in music right now is what we saw with like the blog boom, mm -hmm. where everyone had a blog. And everyone was like randomly making money all of a sudden. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And yeah. then like, well, that's not the case anymore. Like you have to specialize in something and you have to figure out what your audience is and really like cater everything around that. Yeah. And I think there are tools being made right now that can help with that because you know like things like merch or you know like i mean kickstarter alone was such a big deal huge for the music community yeah but i think we're gonna get a lot more local and the global things will happen and maybe it'll just be like a blip um but it won't be i don't want to say it won't be as big we're gonna get more local mm -hmm. yeah i hope I, we get more local yeah i don't see us you know i said it last year i don't see more than two or three platinum albums a year anymore mm -mm. if that Mm -mm. Just, you know, and it has nothing to do with the quality of music. Well, and I mean, too, like we're we're talking about purchasing an album. Yeah. Meanwhile, like, did you see the numbers for um, when they announced who got shortlisted for the Mercury? Mm -hmm. The numbers that shot up on Spotify. Yeah. Two thousand percent for yeah. that one. Two thousand mm -hmm. percent. We, I mean, like, we're gonna have to figure out how to like get a little bit more of those micro pennies moving. As much as people like to shit on streaming, mm -hmm. like yeah, micro pennies are better than no pennies. And people are listening to your music. You know, some yeah. some guy in Antarctica is digging the new track from a random Canadian folk singer. Mm -hmm. I, you know, is if the idea of music is about connecting with other people and getting your music out there, the the current music age should be your favorite thing in the world. Oh yeah. If you're just pretentious and you make your music only for yourself, congratulations. Nothing's changed in a hundred years. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still keep it to yourself. I, I, I agree with you completely. I, mean, I don't it, get anyone who shits on it, digital. We're losing a lot of um, intention. Yeah. Which is why Shuffle is my, like, arch nemesis. But we're going to we're gonna consume a lot. Mm -hmm. But whether or not it's going to equate to successful career musicians is the tricky part that I, I haven't been able to figure out quite yet. My thanks again to Kibby for taking time to chat with me. You can follow her on Twitter at at Kibbe, that's K-I-B-B-E. And of course, go to somekindofawesome.com right now. Go. Seriously, what are, you, what are you waiting for? You can multitask. Go do it. Before we call it a week, though, I do, of course, have your weekly Ear Fuel assignment. For those of you new to the podcast, each week I give an album that should be listened to in full without any distraction. This comes from the idea that I believe most people have relegated listening to music to a background task. You're driving, you're at work, doing something around the house, whatever. And this is all about consciously listening to music for the sake of listening to music. This week, since I know it's one of, if not Kibby's all-time favorite artists, we are going to turn to one of my all-time favorite albums. Your ear fuel assignment is Beck's 2002 masterpiece, Sea Change. The album is, to put it simply, heartbreakingly beautiful. The songs swell and move in ways that pull you in deeper, and they push you to a level of emotion and emotional connection that is rarely achieved anywhere in music. As legend has it, the album was written at the end of Beck's long-term relationship, and if the stories are to be believed, the entire album was written in less than a week. And once you experience how brilliantly these songs flow into one another, the latter becomes very believable. And it's just this somber, desolate feeling that runs from beginning to end that you can't help but fall in love with. But you see, that's sort of the magic here. The songs are very full, and they have this depth to them, but at the same time, things feel perfectly sparse. All of the songs here center around his acoustic guitar, but whether it's a lush string section or just the right amount of reverb and echo, he's able to put together a masterclass on variations of a single theme. There's also plenty of painful honesty in his voice, and you rarely experience as soul-bearing a performance as you do here. I mean, I love this sort of music, and this album is just tough to top in that area. Beck is one of those people who really never makes the same album twice, and he might be known for his quirkier stuff like you find on Mutations and Odelay, and that's fine. But Sea Change is truly otherworldly, and it's one of those albums that once you experience it, you can't comprehend how you lived without it. So, yeah, go put your ears on it if you somehow don't already know and love Sea Change. Thank me later. That about wraps things up, and as always, you can follow me on Twitter at, at the Daily Guru and at Get Earfuel, and we are in the iTunes store under Earfuel. And hey, uh, if you dug the podcast, 
go tell a friend, okay? And if you only have two friends, tell them both. That is your weekly Irrefuel. Share and enjoy. Enjoy.